So the day has finally arrived. A part we've been waiting for for nearly nine weeks is here. And today we're gonna to give you a brief overview. Oh, it's the B550M Aorus Pro from Gigabyte. Okay, so before we delve into the depths of the B550M Aorus Pro from Gigabyte, we're gonna do a little unboxing experience here with you guys. So, this is the latest generation chipset from AMD, and it will support, well, we'll put up on the screen what it supports. get it looks like two standard SATA cables in black the installation guide inside we also get the motherboard manual and would you believe it they still supply CDs because I guess that's cheaper to supply than a, a USB stick or something like that for those that don't have internet access always go to the website for the latest drivers but anyway they provide that the manual and you also get a fairly rigid, actually quite nice looking Aorus sticker. Okie dokie, let's open this up and see what they've done. Okay, so now we've unboxed, let's have a look at all the connections this B550M Aorus Pro offers you. Okay, so along the top here, we've got four USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports. HDMI 2.1 and DisplayPort 1.4, both supporting HDCP 2.3 and HDR. So here we've got USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A ports here, and another two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports there, and one is a BIOS flashback there, and I'll explain how that works a little bit later on. A USB 3.2 Type C port there, the little one there, and another USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A port there, the red port there. It does come with gigabit LAN on this one, not 2.5 gig. If you want a 2.5 gig port, you'll need to get the P variant of this board. And here you've got your SPDIF out, your optical out, that is rear connections and all the usual IO connections for speakers there. And that is your back panel. Okay, so going back to the BIOS Flashback, or the Q Flash Plus, as they call it on the Gigabyte Aorus boards. This allows you to update your BIOS in the event that you do not have a CPU compatible. And what this will mean is that you can fire up the board with only power, no CPU, no memory, and it allows you to plug in a memory stick with a compatible BIOS update, and then it will automatically flash your motherboard to support your new chips when they are finally released. Okie dokie, so as we move on to the IO connections or the fan connections and support on the actual motherboard itself, we've got CPU option here, which is for things like AO water coolers and stuff like that. CPU fan header there, digital LED, which is that port there, a normal LED, which is the 50-50 type connection, the four pin connection goes on that one there. Another fan header there, that's a four pin fan header. As we move down, we've got the 24 pin ATX power connector on there. Four DDR4 memory slots up to 4,000 megahertz speed. We've got four SATA ports here, poking out this way, towards this way, not the uh, sort of top down ones that you used to get on motherboards. We've got front IO port connections there. Clear CMOS is around here somewhere. I think it's those two there. USB 3.2 header for front panel support there and another two USB headers there for USB 2. As we move under the bottom PCIe connection there, which we'll get to in a minute, we've got another system fan there. The TPM, which is Trusted Platform Module, which home users really don't really use that. So I don't know why they put that on, uh, on these type of boards, but you never know, they might be used 
at some point in the future. Uh, we've got a COM port there, should you need to use an old style COM port. Again, not really something I would have put on a modern board, but they seem to think that it's quite important. Next to the COM port, we've got the Thunderbolt, the internal Thunderbolt connector there. That's this one here. Another four pin RGB header there. So that's 12 volt. And another three pin RGB header there. So here next to the three pin RGB header, we've got a two pin and this is for RGB Fusion 2.0. This is a gigabyte specific header here. So that's that one. And next to that, you've got the old style front panel audio connector. We would always recommend using the back one. Quality is somewhat better. Okay, so let's move on to the most important things. We've got PCIe times four. Although this looks like a times 16 slot, it's not. It's actually only a times four, uh, electrically times four, as it goes through the south bridge of the chipset there. We've got a PCIe times one connection there as well. And if you're wondering why these are only times four, well, it's because of PCIe lanes. And this is the reason why. This is a PCIe 4.0 slot. And as you can see, it's got the extra support there for the upcoming heavy graphics cards that are coming out the 3000 series uh, NVIDIA GPUs. Okay, moving on to the storage options on here. Obviously you can put storage on the PCIe times for here you can get a uh, card that goes in there and you utilizes all those lanes on there and even the graphics if you've got a cpu that supports onboard graphics if that's your thing um, but it comes with two nvme pcie slots here so you've got the bottom one here which is connected to the chipset itself that gives you pcie gen 3 times 4 support and that can take up to an 80 size nvme drive there and then you've got this one here which has a heatsink already built in and I haven't taken this off let's have a look and see if it comes with uh, a thermal pad normally they do and there we go a captive screw as well which is really good to see a thermal pad which is really really great to see and that's quite a chunky heatsink not bad actually not bad and that will take up to 110 uh, PCIe NV NVMe uh, port there this one here is your PCIe 4.0 M.2 connector, and this one is connected directly to the CPU. So you're gonna use all those lanes from the CPU instead of the chipset. So this I find really, really good. If you ever get confused as to which slot you should put your memory in, well, this motherboard tells you which ones you should be using if you don't have four. And it says here, the first two you should be using are the ones furthest away from the CPU, A2, which is this one here, and B2, this one at the bottom there. Always use the ones furthest away on modern CPUs and uh, this one in particular as well. And it also shows you that on the motherboard there. Really, really neat. Now, let's talk about the thing that's probably on everyone's mind is power delivery. The new CPUs are very, very power hungry and this board shouldn't disappoint. So here underneath this huge heatsink here is the MOSFETs and it's a 10 plus three phase design, but these are doubled. So it's five doubled to 10 and then you've got the plus three. Now, if I turn it around to give you a good look at the heat sinks themselves. So just showing you the design of the heatsink. Let's just pull this off quickly. No, oh, I can't get it off. Yes, we can. We can pull it off. Anyway, so let's just move that out of the way. So here we've got the heatsink for the MOSFETs and you can see that it's quite a chunky design. It's got a lot of slices in there to give it more surface area. And from the bit you can see there, it even goes back further than that. Um, you can see here, this is all this here is the heatsink for the MOSFETs. So it's quite a sizable chunk of uh, metal there. And you can see up here, we've got a slightly smaller one. Again, looking at the side, I don't know if I can show you this. Have a look they've tried to get the most surface area they can by cutting out a little bit and extending it down here and putting grids in the more the more things you have on it the more gaps and grids and cutouts you have on it the more surface area you have on it which which is what you want on the latest cpus especially amd they do get quite warm um anyone interested in the back of the motherboard there is nothing there is no connectivity on the back of the motherboard, but you obviously you have the screws for your 
uh, MOSFET heat sinks there and the back plate for the CPU bracket there. No M.2 connections at all as they are all on the front side. Uh, one thing to note is that on this one it mentions that all the fan headers they will automatically detect whether it's an AIO cooler in there or whether it's just a fan a PWM fan any whatever type of cooler or fan or pump it's meant to automatically detect and adjust settings accordingly obviously we can't build into this yet we are going to be building into this and I will show you it in more detail about the software that comes with it. Uh, we're going to be putting a 3300X on this as soon as they're available. As I'm sure you've already looked, motherboards, power supplies and CPUs are really hard to get right now. So there we go. That is our quick overview. And that literally was an overview. It's just showing you every, all the connections on it and what, what sort of things this can offer you. As for performance and how this thing's going to cope with actual hardware on it, we'll have to do in another video. I am going to be putting a 3800X in this because I already have one in my editing rig. And we're also going to be trying a 3300X, as I've just said as well. And we'll see compared to B450, how much of a difference the B550 board has with things like overclocking ability as well. We ordered this motherboard, like I said at the beginning, probably nearly nine weeks ago now. And uh, we in fact have had it maybe a couple of weeks already. Um, so it's, a, it's looking like a really promising motherboard, but it's very hard to get hold of right now. So I've looked in the UK on most retailers like eBuyer and Scan and other places like that, and it's just not in stock anywhere. So I will put links for this product from all different companies and you're just gonna have to keep scanning them to see when it's in stock. But the only place I can currently see it is on Newegg in the US for $129. Now you can order it from there, but it will take a little while and you'll have to pay import on that as well. And delivery is really expensive. So if you can wait and you really want this motherboard, you're just going to have to wait. So there we have it. That is the end of our quick overview. And I hope you liked our brief look at the B550 Aorus Pro M gaming motherboard from Gigabyte. Hopefully you like this one. And don't forget to check out all the links, how you can support us in the video description down below and we'll see you next time.